I immediately stop and I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? And he goes, we're gonna have sex now. My hands now, you are the cause of my euphoria. welcome back to another video so if you're judging by the title this is a story time so I'm gonna start doing story times every single week on my channel because you guys really liked them when I used to do them um, way back when okay yeah lay down nice good boy okay yeah if you hear grunts or any other kind of noise, it's Max. This story time has to do with my first kiss, which was extremely, yeah, my first kiss was not you. I know you wanna give me kisses. Look at how sweet. He's like, I heard someone say kiss. Kiss? Okay, okay, all right. This story time has to do with my first kiss. It was super traumatic and almost ended up with me Okay, <laughs> just a little disclaimer before we get into this video. This story has to do with me getting into a sort of dangerous situation um, where I didn't have any control um, or I was gonna be forced into doing something. Um, so this has to go along with sexual harassment, all that kind of jazz. So if you're not comfortable listening to a story about that, then I suggest that you click off this video. I know a lot of you guys also have PTSD just like me um, and, or anxiety and you guys may get triggered by this video if, you have, if you've gone through something similar. So this is just a disclaimer at the beginning of this video that do not watch this video if you've gone through something like that and you feel like you're going to get triggered by it. This is my story, this actually happened and yeah, so. Let's go way back in 2016. Um, it was April and I went, well, first off, we need a little bit of backstory. So I'm gonna give people different names because these people are still in my life. They still know of me. They still, I know some of them keep up with me. Um, so for the sake of their privacy, um, I'm not gonna be saying names, but some of you that know me in real life or are watching this may know it's about these individuals. Anyways. So I had just moved down to Florida and I had no friends, no nobody, I knew nobody down here. So that's when I became friends with a girl and we're gonna call her Abby, okay? Her name is Abby, um, that's easy to remember. So I became friends with Abby right in the beginning of the school year and um, we immediately became best friends. Now Abby had a boyfriend. Her boyfriend's name was Steve. So Abby and Steve were dating and um, me and Abby did almost everything together. We lived in the same neighborhood, so we would always go bike riding or skateboarding or just walking around. We would always hang out with each other. That was what we did. Steve was weird. I don't know how to put this. Steve was emo and goth kind of, um, and kind of a loner and not many people liked Steve, but um, I just moved down here, didn't know really much about them. All I knew was not that many people liked Steve, but my best friend was dating Steve. Me and Abby and occasionally Steve would all go do something. We were all pretty close friends. Um, we were always over Steve's house or my house or Abby's house. Now, this is going forward to almost the end of eighth grade. Um, Abby and Steve had broken up right in front of me so we were all hanging out and they got into a big fight and abby said i'm going home you know i don't want to deal with this we're done and i'm just standing there and abby did not want me to come with her so i was standing there with steve and we were a couple streets away from steve's house steve said okay whatever we're gonna ride on my hoverboard everything's gonna be cool um forget her she'll get over it she'll come back 
whatever, give her some time. So I said, okay, that's fine. This is just a fun fact about me. I cannot ride hoverboards for the life of me. I fall off of them. I just don't, I can't work them. No, 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 no. He had his hoverboard and he said, you know what, whatever, we'll have fun by ourselves. Do you want to ride my hoverboard? And I said, heck yeah, I can ride those. <laughs> I'm cool, just like you. And I got on this hoverboard and I fell immediately. Scraped up my entire arm. Now, Steve was one of those like boys that he thought that he was too good and he thought that he could get anybody that he wanted. So he would constantly flirt with me behind Abby's back and I never picked up on it because I was literally 13 and I was like, always just being nice, whatever. But looking back, it was pretty creepy because like they would kiss, right? Like, you know how like little middle school couples would kiss or whatever. And he would look at me, like he would make eye contact with me. I know, what the heck? So yeah, it was just a couple of things that were just really, really weird right off the bat. I fall off this hoverboard, scrape up my entire arm. And we were a couple of streets away from his house and he said, you know, it's fine, let's go home to my house and I'll fix you up. Like I'll get band-aids and stuff and get the rocks of your arms because there's literally like gravel in my arm. So we go back to his house. And let me also add that he was 15 or 16 at the time of this and I was only 13. We go back to his house and he gets the um, alcohol and and the bandages and i can't exactly see my elbow and so i couldn't like get the pebbles or gravel out of my arm so he had to help me and the whole time he was like looking at me and i could tell he was trying to flirt with me and i was like what the heck like abby isn't here like um this is kind of weird i don't know how i feel about this whatever it was just giving me a weird vibe and he's like let's just hang out we played video games everything was cool i went home and he continued to text me and i was like hey what's going on with abby she's not responding to me you know what's going on with all of this so a couple days go by, go by and i am about to go are you done i'm about to go on vacation to orlando to go to universal and and meet up with like family members or family friends um with my mom and my sister. So we all go to Orlando, we stay in a hotel and we're having a great old time. And then Steve continues to text me. Now at this point, Steve was clearly trying to get with me. He was saying like, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so pretty. I want to date you and all this other stuff. Now, this is where my mindset was at the time. At the time I had a huge crush on Steve. I thought he was cute. Um, I seen how he was with my friend Abby and I wanted a relationship. I never dated anyone. The, so the entire trip he's texting me, wanting to call me. Um, and this is, this is first red flag. If somebody doesn't want to tell you how they feel over text message and they only want to do it in person or over the phone, kind of be weary of that. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a manipulator, but in this case, it is very obvious that he didn't want any proof of him saying these things to me so he would say like hey can we call and like we never talked on the phone or anything we would always text back and forth and like kick or something again I am 13 years old like I had just turned 13 years old and Steve was about to turn 16 lay down Steve was about to turn 16 he was like 15 16 years old we're on the phone and he's like you're so beautiful have you ever kissed anyone before I could be your first kiss I could teach you how to kiss all this stuff so I'm like, you know what, Steve is really cute. I would love to kiss Steve. So we set up a plan that I was gonna go over his house on the following Wednesday when I got back from Orlando. So um, basically at the time, like the middle school was like part of the high school. So he was in high school, but I was in middle school, but we were still on like the same campus, but we had different buses. So um, my bus would get there earlier than his bus would so i got home and i got ready and i don't know what told me to do this but i made sure that i was wearing jeans and if you are a girl out there you understand this um if you don't want to 
show off your body, I guess. I don't know how to explain this in like the nicest way possible. Jeans are kind of like armor, if you if, if that makes sense to you guys. Jeans are not that easy to take off. <laughs> and um, basically, it was like a chastity belt. Okay, I was like, I'm gonna wear jeans. Um, because I don't want to do nothing else. I don't want him to get that idea that I want to do anything else. So, more jeans. So, I wore really, really tight skinny jeans and a t-shirt. Just, like, normal, like, casual. Anyways, um, I get ready. And I'm waiting for him to text me. And he texts me. He's like, hey, you can come over. So, I walk all the way to his house. It was just a couple streets away from mine. And I get there. And we're playing video games. His mom is there with his little cousin. Everything is great. Um, so we're just hanging out and then his mom says, you know what, Steve, I'm gonna go to the store. Do you guys want anything? I'm gonna go get some milk, whatever. Everything's fine. She leaves and as soon as she leaves, Steve closes the door and turns to me and he says, okay, we can start now. <laughs> Not the slickest way to, I don't know, it was weird. Um, so then... I'm sitting on his bed and he had like a twin bed and he just came over and basically like pushed me backwards and was like on top of me and started to kiss me and he's before he did he said you really have never kissed anyone and I said no I have not he goes don't worry baby I'm gonna teach you I'm gonna teach you and I went okay <laughs> me being 13 I didn't know a single thing so um we're laying sideways on his bed and i have always been really tall so like at this time i think i was probably around like five foot seven or eight and i could not fit on this bed comfortably sideways so i literally had to ask him can we turn so we turned like we were laying on his bed and basically we're just sucking face for a good probably 15 minutes and i don't even remember most of it <laughs> But it was not that good. <laughs> we would switch positions, like I'd be on top or he would be on top. And we were just making out. We had all our clothes on, everything was great. So now I'm on top. And remember how I said I was wearing jeans? This boy, this boy slips his thumbs into like the, my belt line and like tries to pull them off of me. like. that movement you know what I mean tries to get them off and I immediately stop and I'm like whoa what are you doing and he goes I kid you not this is what he says we're gonna have sex now and I went no no we're not like I'm a kid I'm a little kid at this point and he goes yes we are like I'm being told what's happening I don't have a choice and I just shook my head. I was like, no. See, I was not ready for that at all. And I knew for a fact, I did not want that to happen. So, <laughs> Steve then proceeds to get angry and he doesn't say anything for like a good minute. So it's like really weird. So I'm just kind of like laying there like, looking at him and he <laughs> is visibly upset that I'm telling him no. Now, a little backstory on Steve. Steve is the youngest child and he gets whatever he wants. And if he doesn't get what he wants, then he says that he's going to commit suicide. So he threatens suicide if he doesn't get what he wants. Um, so he's very good at manipulating his parents, his siblings, and anybody around him. So he looks upset. And I'm staring at him and it's making me uncomfortable. I'm like, oh no, I upset him. What do I do? And when I didn't act quick enough or didn't respond quick enough with a yes answer or what he wanted to hear. He immediately like shoved me off of him. So at this time I was really tiny. Um, I was really skinny and he shoves me off of him and I basically like hit the wall. He stands up and he goes, you're a, you're a bitch. You're, you're this and you're that and you're fat and you're worthless and all this. All because I told him I didn't want to have sex with him. So, I'm laying here stunned. I'm just, I'm appalled. I've never heard him speak to me like this. I've never heard him speak to Abby like this. So I'm just like kind of confused because what I always saw was him being really sweet 
and I knew that he had like issues with like depression and self-harm but I didn't see a dark side of him at all until that day and thankfully he only got to call me a couple of names before his mom walked back into the house and that's when he opened his door and started playing his games like nothing happened so I'm just laying on his bed like stunned like I'm still I'm still sitting there like frozen and I just remember sitting up and kind of like looking at his mom kind of like you know she came around the corner and she's like oh hey guys whatever um and I just remember like just just this blank look on my face and I was just so shocked that I was just called all of these names because I didn't want to So, yeah, so I went home and it was really, really weird after that. But this is the thing that you girls or guys should be worried about. Some people are not good people. Some people are very manipulative and they know how to get what they want. Just be careful. I don't know how I ended up in that situation again, but I did. Yeah, and that's the last I ever heard of Steve. Um, so yeah. If you guys enjoyed this story time, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have had any other crazy first kiss stories. Also, comment down below any other story times you'd like me to film. There's going to be a new story time every single week. Every single Saturday, look for a story time. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye!